We are now going to create a C-sharp GUI. GUI stands for Graphical User Interface, and this will be the type of program we write from now to the end of the semester. So let's not delay, and let's click on Visual Studio. If you remember before, we would do File, New, Project. But we don't want a console application. We want a Windows form application. Make sure C Sharp is picked. And we're going to come down here and we're going to call it Hello World GUI. Before we had Hello World, just regular old text. Now we're doing a graphical user interface. So we're going to click OK. As you can see, we have a form. And we have over here in our Solution Explorer, Hello World GUI is the name of the solution. This is the project. For everything we're going to do for this semester, the solution and the project will have the same name. Only if you're a programming major and you get into advanced C Sharp will you be doing more things with projects. And you can see down here we have a form called form1.cs. Down here is what we call the properties. Properties are things that describe how something should look, such as size, color, and alignment. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is name Form 1 to a better name. Form 1 doesn't mean anything, so we're going to right click it and choose Rename. And make sure you leave the .cs there. So all forms begin with FRM. That's what we call Hungarian notation. We're going to hit enter, and you're going to get this message saying, would you like to change it everywhere else in the program? And you'll notice down here will change as well. So you're going to say yes. Make sure you click yes. Okay. Now we're going to come over and click on the form, and you will see the properties here will change to be reflective of the form. Another thing you want to do, and I urge you to do, is right here is different ways to group your properties. One is by category, such as all the fonts. I like alphabetical because that's how I learned. So you can see right here is text. The name of the form is Form Hello World, which we renamed here. What the user sees when the programmers run is the text. So we're going to come in here and change that to be Hello World GUI. And I'm going to hit enter and notice immediately it changes it here. The next thing I want to do, and I'm going to make this bigger, is I'm going to add in components to the screen. So I'm going to go to View, and I'm going to have the Toolbox appear. The Toolbox are the different objects that we can add to the screen, to the form, that is. I'm going to click the Auto Hide here. So when I need it, I come over here and it comes back. When I don't need it, it scooches over here. If you would like it to stay, click here and it will always be there. We're going to go click on common controls and these are the different things we can work with. We're going to do a label. We're going to grab the label and I'm going to drag it to here. Notice once this is here, the properties change from the form to the label. So the first thing I'm going to do is change its name to LBL message. That LBL stands for label and message is what we're going to show the user. See the auto size? That's bold. True. We're going to change it to false. And watch what happens. Once it's false, we can stretch it and make it as big as we want to. The other thing we're going to change is border style. We're going to come down here and I'm going to make it look fix 3D. That gives it that recessed look. And we're going to scroll down and you'll see its text property says label 1. That corresponds to this right here. So we're going to blank that out. Okay, easy. Now we're going to add three buttons. So I showed you how we could drag it over. And see how lines show up to help you a 
align it. I'm going to show you another way in a moment. So we're going to click on here and we're going to come over here and we're going to give it a name of BTN is a prefix to let you, let you know it's a button and it's going to say hello. And we're going to scroll down and change its text from button 1 to something a little more meaningful like hello. See? See how easy that is? What we're going to do now is add a second button. Instead of dragging it over, you notice I'm going to click on it once and look at my mouse pointer becomes like a little T. And I get another button. And this is showing you how to align it. You'll notice this button and this button are two different sizes. We'll deal with that later. So we're going to come over here and we're going to give that a new name called BTN Goodbye. And we're going to change its text property to be Goodbye. And we're going to get yet one more button and we're going to call that one the exit button. And you guessed it, we come up here, make it BTN exit, and we change its text to say exit. Notice you can resize the buttons at any time by clicking on and grabbing the handlebars. And I can move them around by just simply dragging them. Another feature I'm going to show you is how to make them all the si same size using tools called the layout tools. So you select the first one that you like. I like how this one size is, so I click on it. I hold down the control key and click on the others. Notice the original, or the one we're going to model, has white handlebars, and the ones that we're going to copy to have the black handlebars. And if I come up here and hover on each one of these, it will tell you what it does, but this one makes them all the same size, so I click there, and there you go, they all have the same size. What we're going to do now is write code here to make things appear here. And before we do that, I'm going to change one more property. I'm going to go back up here. And notice I'm on the label message. And we have, we changed the border style, but what we didn't change and I'm looking for it right now is the text align property, which is top left. I'm going to change that to be center. So I clicked here, found text align, and changed it to there. So now when I click on the hello button, double click, notice whatever I call the button, button hello, and I'm going to write a little piece of code when you click on the button hello, what it's going to do. Don't panic if you lost your form. If you come up here, you'll have two tabs. Click here, and you're back to design. Double click here, and you're in code mode. So notice I'm going to type LBL, and notice message pops up. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to do dot text equals hello. Semicolon. So whenever I click on the button hello, I'm going to put the word text hello into the label message. I'm going to go back to the design and goodbye. And notice, make sure you're in the right place. I want to be in the button goodbye click, the beginning of the code and the end of the code. And this is what happen this code happens when you click on button hello. So I'm going to type label message dot text equals good bye. Don't forget your semicolon. We're going to go back to the design and we're going to click on the exit button to write code to shut the program down. So now we're going to click or double click on the exit. So you can see we wrote code and whenever you click on the button hello, we're going to put the text hello into the label. And whenever we click on the goodbye, this goes into the label. And now I'm going to write code to shut down the program. So we're going to type application dot exit. Now I do want to bring to your attention here, see this cube here? That's called a method. Text is a property. Property describes size of what it contains. Methods 
are pink cubes, which are action. Think of adjectives or properties to describe its look and feel. And methods are verbs, like to exit the program. And whenever you see a little cube like this, you have to put parentheses. I didn't make that rule up, C Sharp did, but just remember when you see a pink cube when you're typing, and I'll demo again, this is called IntelliSense. As you type, it gives you a list of things to pick from. Cube, oh, that means I need parentheses. All right, let's get back to the form design. Do you remember how to do that? You click right here. And let's run it and see if it works. Okay. I don't like how the form wasn't centered. Let's click hello. Look, the words hello come in. I click goodbye. The words goodbye come in. And I click exit. The program ends. Let's change a few features. Let's go click on the form. The form is selected. You can see by the handlebars. And right here in the property window shows you for what's currently selected. As I select different things, the property window will update. I want to go to the form, and there's a property called Start Position, and I'm going to change that to be the center of the screen. I'm also going to come up to the label message, and notice I am now on the label message, and we're going to play around with the font. See how font? We can click on the font, and the dot, dot, dot is called an ellipsis, which means there's more to see. You click there, and look, I can make it 14, and I can make it bold. And I can click OK. And let's experiment. Let's go to the hello and let's add a little more code. I'm going to come to the end and I'm going to type label message dot for color. See that? Equals color dot. And look at all the colors that come up. So we're going to make it green. Do you see a pink cube? No, that means it's not a method, so therefore I do not need parentheses. And when we say goodbye, we're going to have them turn it to red. We want the for color equals color dot R E D. And if I want to select this, I can hit the tab key or click here. And I do need a semicolon. Let's change, let's go back to the form, click here. Let's hit play, or start, and let's see how it works. Notice the form's now in the middle of the screen. I get different font and colors, and I hit the exit. Congratulations, you have got your first tutorial in under 13 minutes on how to create a C-sharp GUI.